Hello there. Right, today this tutorial is going to take you over the high seas. Um, this tune is called the Tea Clipper and this is a tutorial basically taking you through how I play the tune and how you might approach it. I'll play it in the normal way first of all so you can listen to it and then I'll kind of break it down into slower stages in little chunks so we can kind of talk about each section and how to play it and also I'll try and slow parts down so you can follow. Now I've worked out the notation so you should see that on the screen as well but this is what the tune sounds like. chunky in the approach that you have to playing this particular tune which is in the key of C so we don't need to worry about sharps and flats it's all natural notes and it's quite chunky because the way it starts is a sort of bone, a bouncing bow technique in other words you sort of I think that's called staccato um, anyway, I've tried to indicate that on the notation with the little dots below the notes. The notes that will have a sort of striking effect. And I'll play the tune without any double stops. So we can just look at that first of all. It starts off on a G, which is on the D string. Up to the A. to the G string so the first sort of phrase as it were is played mainly on the D string we go up to the A string back to the D string and then drop down to the G string so it sounds like this again three four Now the way to play that is those first three um, notes which are crotchets you sort of bounce your bow. Now on the notation I also show an open G so what I'm doing is I'm playing the bottom two strings together and of course the G string is acting like a drone. So it's resonating with the G that I'm also playing on the D string. And you get that effect. 
Now it's a great way to start a tune because it makes everybody sit up and listen and think, well, what's going on here? So you're straight in there with uh, a nice big entry into the tune. And then the next part is fairly straightforward. Now I play a double stop here. In other words, I play the C and I also play the um, F, on the F natural on the D string. So that's, this is the F natural and this is the C which I play on the G string. Instead of playing, I'm kind of emphasising that part by playing the C and the F. And then I just take it down to the, the, the lower string, down to that bottom G. So let's take it from the top, three, four. play the same thing again but instead of going down we kind of go up. This is the next phrase as it were. I'll play that again. This is the second phrase don't forget. The way I play that is I put some, once again, I start off with the I drone that G string again and now I do the double stop now I do something tricky, a unison note I slide my ring finger up from the, the C on the G string and I slide it up to the D whilst also playing the open D as a G as a as a drone. unison note too tricky and I remember when I was trying to figure out unison notes some years ago I just really struggled with them. I've worked out something else you can do instead. Instead of playing the unison note, that one, you can do this. And then play a double stop. with the um, B by playing the B on the G string and the open D. It sounds quite nice and it kind of finishes off that phrase. And of course if you struggle to play these double stops What you can do is just play the melody and instead of playing double stops just 
drone the G string. Or if you're playing the melody on the G string, drone the D string. By drone I just mean you're playing the open note. It kind of gives you the same effect, that's the point. So you've got alternatives there, depending at what level of fiddle playing you're actually at. So I've tried to indicate the um, important double stops on the musical notation. And of course you can add your own wherever you see fit. It's up to you. But the thing is, the notation is kind of giving you a guide, a starting point. Now don't forget with fiddle playing, um, of course, it's just an indication. Um, we don't tend to stick strictly to the musical notation. I know it's important, but once you've got the tune up here, you can then add your own embellishments. So, enough um, chatting away, some more. Let's look at the B section. Okay, the B section. Now, we start off with double stops, but first of all, I'm going to play the B tune a through, right through again, and I'm going to leave out the double stops so you can hear the actual melody. It's all played on either the D string or the G string. first double stop is this, where we play the middle finger on the D string playing the F and the first finger on the G string playing the A. Play those two together and you get this. Now we play the um, <clears throat> We play the E on the D string and we play the C on the G string. Now we play a slightly different double stop. This time we play the F and a C. Now we play the E and the C. And I'm simply droning the D at the same time. So it kind of put the whole thing together. It sounds like this. Basically the tune, but of course it's all about the bowing, so to put the dynamic bowing into this B part of the tune sounds like this. Now what I'm 
I'm going to do is going to play right the way through. I'm going to play the tune without any double stops, nice and simple. So if you want to learn it, hopefully you should be able to pick it up by ear. And then I'll add the double stops a second time through. So here we go. Three, four. Double stops added. T-Clipper. Now there might have been one or two places where I deviated slightly from the notation. That's because I'm a fiddle player and basically I play what I hear in my head rather than what I hear or see on notation. To me notation is just like a map. I look at the map once or twice and then I figure it out for myself. If I'm going on a journey I maybe refer to the map but rather than having Google Maps telling me which way to go, right, left and the other, I basically, I get some idea of which way I'm going and then figure it out for myself. It's, it's the same with fiddle playing. Um, a good analogy, I suppose, is, yeah, if you're going on a journey, rather than using a map and using Google Maps telling you which way to go, you use a compass and you kind of figure out your own way through. So there you go. So that's the tune T Clipper um, and a little bit of, um, of map reading. Who knows? So that's the tune T Clipper and I hope this video is useful for you. I'm going to play it one more time to finish the video now and I'll try and hold the speed back so it will give you another indication about how I play this tune. There are a couple of grace notes which I've indicated on the musical notation. There's one. There's a second one. There's the first. 
there's a second. So you can add those in if you wish. If not, don't worry if you, if you can't play grace notes very well. Leave them out until you feel more comfortable with the tune. But anyway, here we go. I'll play it one more time. Three, four... Bye-bye now.